So once again, greetings everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning from whichever part of the world you belong to. Welcome to the 93rd session of the online Optom Learning Series. Let me introduce to you our speaker for today. So today we have Mr. Jyoti Balaji from India, Chennai. He is uh, speaking to us today about cataracts, which is one of the very most uh, important or very most commonest condition which we see and how to grade a uh, cataract using slit lamp as well as o OCT. But before we dive into the topic, uh, let me give you some background about uh, Mr. Jyoti Balaji. He completed his post graduation in optometry from the elite school of optometry Chennai. And currently he is working as a senior manager at Shankar Netralaya India. His research interests are in ocular imaging, retinal biomarkers in pathological myopia and also optometric education. He is actively involved in providing academic guidance in clinics as well as research activities of postgraduate optometry students at the elite school of optometry as well as the Shankara Netralaya. His three decades of optometry clinical experience in a super speciality ophthalmic center has brought to him many awards and recognitions both on national as well as international platforms. Uh, so welcome Jyoti sir with that experience I think uh, a very easy I would say cataract is something which we commonly see it's a very easiest probably detectable disease but uh, you know it's kind of challenging when it comes to grading it and that's what you're going to help us to, uh, to take over to your session where you will let us know about how to grade cataracts using slit lamp so uh, welcome Jyoti sir onto our platform uh, thank you so much for giving your time and let me just leave the screen time to you now Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I call him Barodawala sometime, but uh, always I call him uh, Fakhruddin. Fakhruddin, um, I know him from probably from 2010. Um, he, he, uh, when I met him first, he came down to Chennai and uh, he presented his research work uh, at the Shankar Netralaya in uh, EV Memorial. That's how I met him. During my short stay between 2013 to 2014, when I was there in Malaysia, we used to interact very, very regularly. Uh, not, not definitely for the academic purpose, mostly for the recreation and the friendly manner. Very recently, he invited me and he asked me whether I can give any talk on his uh, OOLS and I immediately accepted. And uh, I should thank him to invite, he invited me for giving a talk. And what, what really surprised is, uh, um, as an independent practitioner, as well as academician, and he's, he developed his own interest of conducting such a web series to help lots and lots of people across the world. Um, so that is a phenomenal work, okay? So before uh, moving to the talk, uh, let me wish you all the participants, very, very happy New Year 2021. Um, hopefully, we, we will be meet in person, talk each other, um, like uh, uh, not the new normal. Probably we will be, let us be like a regular normal. So basically, you need to identify what is the cataract and grade the cataract. All right. So I have launched the poll and looking at the image uh, on the slide, which ah. sir has put across. We just yeah. want to know your opinion on whether you think what type of cataract it is first and what is the grade of that cataract. So majority of them say that it's a cortical spokes grade three. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. I'm not going to give any answer right now. Probably the talk itself can answer directly. Um, let's move to the next question. Sure. So I'm just going to launch the second one. So again, uh, the picture is on the slide. So identify again the type of cataract and also uh, what do you think is the grade of cataract? So we have four options here, PSC grade one, PSC grade two, 
NS grade three and NS grade two. 53%, almost more than half, I would say, mm. thinks it's nuclear sclerosis NS grade three. And uh, we have some eight, 24 and 16% for the others. All right, so we go to the third one. Okay, so I'm okay, just- Five questions only, don't worry. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so we are in a question three right now. That's right, that's right. So looking at the image on the slide or on the Zoom screen, what you're seeing now, what do you think is the type of uh, cataract? And also if you can identify the illumination technique which has been used. <laughs> there is a clear cut winner where it's uh, PPC and retro illumination, which majority of the attendees have uh, voted for. So again, uh, second last question, I'm just gonna launch the poll and we would request you to give in your votes identify again the type of cataract and also the illumination technique the slit lamp illumination technique which has been used in this particular image so majority 64 percent of them think it's y sutural and diffused illumination okay so one last one this is the image of an oct to be very precise, this is the anterior segment OCT. Anterior segment OCT, that's right. So uh, again, we want you to identify the type of cataract and we just want to know what do you think is the posterior capsule intact. So majority, 58% think it's PPC and ruptured posterior capsule uh, shown in this question five. So yeah. those are the five answers we have, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, participating. Uh, every single participation is so encouraging um, that really gives a little more motivation for us to continue our session. Okay, this is the content I'm going to cover it. I think uh, uh, ever since I started learning optometry, cataract is supposed to be the uh, topmost cause of blindness, whether you name district level, state level, uh, country level or a continent level or a world worldwide you go to any country the percentage may uh, increase or decrease but still it is the number one probably uh, if you name cataract as a religion probably that would be the largest religion in this world i would say the second uh, most important reason why cataract is very very important uh, you name any individual, people may get refractive error, may not get refractive error. Some people may manage uh, without wearing their presbyopic correction. But I have not seen anybody who is going to be totally free from cataract development. Whether they get operated or not operated, it's a different uh, story. But they have to have cataract because it's a pure, pure uh, age related. Some majority of the cases are age related, but you do have other reason why people do develop cataract. So that means uh, any individual who is born in this world has to experience cataract in any, any form. Uh, it may happen with, uh, with and without any systemic, with and without any other problem. So thereby cataract going to affect every single person. I'm going to pay attention to only the four type, um, probably the, th the top three, which is account for nearly 99%, the bottom PPC, that is your posterior polar cataract, though it's relatively rare, but uh, it is equally important to know. So the first and foremost, your uh, nuclear sclerosis, basically the cloudiness happens in the nucleus and the majority of the cases, the central portion of the lenses get involved. And when it comes to cortical spokes, the swelling is happen in the cortex capsule in the form of a spoke or a wedge. So thereby the mid periphery or the peripheral cloudiness do set it up. And uh, the other age related cataract type is your posterior subcapsular. The opacification happens in a posterior capsule often seen relatively younger and younger individuals may, may happen with a steroid user, diabetes, and myopic. So 
probably we need to pay attention to the PAC cataract. The reason is what was estimated by year 2050, we are in 2020 from three decades from now, the world population, majority of them, either they will get diabetes or they will get myopia. The myopia prevalence is getting increased. Diabetic prevalence also getting increased. So thereby the cataract prevalence also going to increase because these are all the risk factor. And it is equally important and it is going to be visually significant. In a posterior polar cataract, though it is relatively less common, but the problem is uh, it is a kind of a congenital type and they do develop over a period of time. Uh, they may, the, the uh, patient or the subject may experience in an early walk of their life with the cataract symptom or they may get uh, this problem maybe around the, uh, the late phase of their life. So all these four types are equally important. But the top three are very, very critical and they are going to uh, uh, you know, develop in 99% of the world population. And they are invariably uh, uh, age related and also other reasons as well. The reason why I chose this particular topic when um, Fakhruddin was uh, requested me, because it's very, very uh, poorly defined topic and if you go, people normally won't spend that much time in terms of learning or uh, uh, clinically grading them. So I thought it may be very, very important. Uh, being optometry, we we, we supposed to quantify, grade, you know, give some numbers so thereby people are going to follow it. And majority of the time, the cataract being uh, graded in terms of your best corrected visual acuity, but what happened when you see them in a slit lamp or even with a touch light, you may see the cataract is very significant and the people may have a better smell and acuity like a 6.9 or a 6.12 and you may say it. But uh, in olden days, if you see um, uh, people invariably get operated or people believe that a cataract happened to be only in an aged population and they need to undergo cataract surgery only if it is mature. But the modern day concept is as long as people have enough symptom, the cataract is significant. If the symptom is directly correlating with the cataract stage, so probably people undergo cataract surgery. And the best way to uh, document and grade them was using slit lamp and using the LOCS is a gold standard method. So if you see, I have put uh, there are three different types of uh, illumination. Uh, the moment you know um, the slit lamp need to be used, the most, though there are six different types of illumination, but the commonly used techniques are these three types. The type one is a diffuse illumination, type two is optic section, type three is a retro illumination. So we will see how each illumination um, since majority of them happen to be students, so thereby it is equally important we need to really learn how these illumination techniques have been set it up. And basically what you need to have in a slit lamp, you've got your illumination system and observation system. Uh, the my, labeled A is your illumination system. The label B is your observation system. So you need to open up the full slit so thereby the entire light falls and illuminates uniformly. Uh, probably you may need to have a diffuser that because the moment you have a large uh, excessive light, patient may not be very comfortable. So you may need to put a diffuser. Diffuser is nothing but uh, um, a translucent kind of a spectacle where you need to put it in front of the uh, illumination system. So thereby there is no focused illumination on the eye surface, it's going to be diffuse. And you need to keep the angle between your observation and the illumination system anywhere between 30 to 50 degree. And usually in a, di um, in a uh, diffuse illumination, the magnification is low. So thereby you, uh, you will tend to see the entire eye, how well it is. If you go for higher magnification, obviously you can see it, but you may not be able to see the entire eye. It may be very difficult. Um, so 
that is how the diffuse illumination being uh, set it up when it comes you are uh, this is all the best example where you can see there is no clear cut um, illumination being focused on a particular area where you can see generally the entire eye and probably this can be the best uh, way to look at it and uh, you can see the illum uh, the illumination is diffuse and the magnification is low so thereby you are able to see the entire eye and uh, uh, they they are different types of cataract of course when it comes optic section what you do is uh, you try to narrow the illumination almost a knife edge and more like a histological uh, section of the cornea and uh, you you try to bring the uh, uh, observation system to almost straight gaze that means zero position but you move the illumination system almost 30 to 50 degree which is very similar and the magnification usually is increased either it can be moderate to high the reason why people keep it moderate to high though thereby you can see the every single layer whether it is a cornea or cataract you can get to see it for example if you see it here you can see the entire structure whether the posterior capsule or the uh, polar area even you can see the wise sutural area also in this picture you can see the anterior surface of the lens and the anterior capsule of the lens also you can see it when it comes uh, this two picture where you can see very very clearly the stage of uh, your nucleus so thereby you 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 get to know how each layer is getting involved and uh, since it's a cataract i have not brought the corneal images so i have restricted myself with the uh, lens images alone when it comes retro illumination this is probably uh, this is the toughest illumination comparing diffuse and uh, uh, optic section because it required some amount of skill basically what you need to do you bring both observation and the illumination system uh, almost parallel to each other as shown in the picture where both your observation and the illumination system being brought into in same line so thereby the illumination goes through the optical media and it hits the retina and reflected back and usually this also where we keep it relatively low so i prefer a low but some people prefer even a moderate moderate and low is okay but uh, we we usually keep the illumination relatively high so thereby you get the maximum amount of uh, uh, light comes back and you get to see uh, the how well the optical media if you see it in this particular picture these are all the various types of um, cataract and uh, the retro illumination shows uh, uh, which part of the lens like whether it's a periphery or a central or a overall okay all the detail you get to see in this particular image so keeping this oh, i just read read you got multiple uh, illumination techniques in slit lamp but when it comes cataract evaluation and grading you should know at least this three one you are diffuse illumination near diffuse illumination most of you know how do you set it up but the only key point what you need to know is when you increase the illumination probably you need to keep the magnification low so thereby you see the entire eye when it comes optic section optic section where you are narrowing down the illumination into thin knife edge so thereby you get to see the structural changes in a every single layer and usually you go relatively higher magnification not the very high magnification when it comes retro illumination the illumination is high but the magnification is relatively low but some people do prefer there is no hard and fast rule what i'm trying to give is how i do it in in clinic generally when it comes grading the most gold standard method is you are uh, locs lens opacification classification system the recent one is the version 3 and this is the image what you really required in the clinic either you can have it in the form of a slide or you can have even the form of a printed high quality printed image you need to put it behind the patient so that way when you see through the slit lamp behind 
whenever you want to cross check it you can clearly cross check it and uh, locs gives three options for you to grade your uh, nuclear cataract and the cortical and posterior subcapsular all three can be graded using your locs ppc we will come relatively in the second part of uh, the presentation and when it comes uh, grading of uh, nuclear sclerosis uh, who uh, given a fairly a simplified grading method basically when you put the optic section and for grading ns optic section is the best way to grade it so basically if you look at the ns1 uh, what happen when you see almost your nucleus area is fairly clearer compared to your anterior capsule to the posterior capsule in this case the posterior shows much more yellowing compared to the nucleus or the anterior capsule so this is usually graded as grade 1 um, obviously if you are going to have picture like this uh, which is uh, kind of graded as zero okay and when it comes your uh, nuclear sclerosis uh, usually happens uh, mid age around the age of 40 some people we do saw um, even 30s also but in the, by and large it will be late late age in a grade 2 almost you will be seeing equal of equal cataractus the coloring both anterior and posterior all will be same whether it's a nucleus or anterior and posterior all three would be almost equal in color so thereby the same amount of opacification would be there and it is rated as a ns2 when it comes grade 3 ns where your nucleus sclerosis is much more stronger than your anterior or a posterior capsule okay and the fourth one obviously you may not able to see the posterior um capsule anterior capsule alone you can able to see and you almost see the brunensen cataract where you see total opaque or a brownish color you can clearly see the browning the total browning of the entire nucleus so this is the easiest simplest way to grade ns so when patient comes to you when they come in a, a, a two visit in a reasonably a good interval in a six months or one year gap when they ask if you are going to grade them it is very very easy and show it i'm not saying you image them and keep it imaging them and keeping it is even more better but at least uh grade them with number that would be greater help in terms of uh, advising or counseling the patient when it comes cortical spoke cortical spoke is uh, something very similar to um uh, our p- uh, pizza how you put a slices you make uh, imaginarily slices and you understand how big the cortical spoke okay when the cortical po- spoke size going to be anywhere between 1/8 to quarter it is graded as cortical spoke grade 1 okay so for example if you are going to take uh, uh, this is the entire cataract and let's say if you split them horizontally off let's say the cataract type is c and you can see uh, this is the almost a quarter and this is not involved in the entire quarter it is almost 1/8 okay so this is can be graded as your cs1 cortical spoke grade 1 when you are going to get a cataract which is going to be more than a quarter uh, more than a quarter and uh, less than almost of the cataract of of portion of the cataractus and it is graded as uh, cortical spoke grade 2 anything more than of it is graded as cs grade 3 so this is a it's a fairly a simple one and i have seen uh, often grading cortical spoke was less common yena such things people do make it but cortical spoke is relatively less and uh, this is fairly a simpler way to understand when it comes posterior subcapsular it is fairly fairly simpler all you need to do uh, y- you need to adjust the slit such that the vertical height of the slit going to be narrowed and you are going to measure in a retro illumination how large okay the cataract is spread if it is going to be uh, 1 mm to 2 mm 
you grade them PSC one. If it is going to be uh, more than two mm, but less than three mm, you grade them as PSC grade two. Anything more than three mm, you make it like a PSC grade three. So this is the simplest way. I just go back since the, some of you may not aware, some of you may be aware, but not doing it every single case. So thereby I'm just going back. Basically, in a NS1, you pay attention to the amount of opacification compared nucleus versus capsular. If nucleus is less, you make grade one. If capsule and nucleus is same, you grade them as grade two. If your nucleus is more than your capsule, you grade them as three. You, you, are, you are seeing the, the entire nucleus become brownish, totally opaque, and still you can see the red red appearance like a bronescent, you label them as grade, grade four. When it comes cortical spokes, you divide imaginarily into uh, eight part of the, uh, the entire portion of the lens. If it is going to be between one eighth to quarter, you grade uh, cortical spoke one. If it is between half to quarter, you grade them into um, cortical spoke grade two. Anything more than half, you grade them as uh, grade, uh, cortical spoke grade three. When it comes to PSC, you need to alter the um, slit height. You measure the height. If it is going to be anywhere between 1 mm to 2 mm, you, you grade that is a PSC cataract grade one. It is between 2 and 3, you grade them as grade two. Anything more than 3 mm, you grade them as PSC cataract grade three. When it comes posterior polar cataract, probably this we need to spend a little more um, time so thereby we understand better. PSC cataract is relatively rare, but please keep it in your mind. It's a congenital type of cataract. Okay, though the incident may range uh, from three to five in thousand cases, and usually bilateral in most of the cases, like in sixty-five to eighty percent of the cases. And there is no gender difference. Both male and female, even other genders are equally involved. I'm not very sure whether the third gender is involved, but definitely first and second is very, very important. And what is very important is um, as an optometrist, as a clinician, we need to investigate and see whether the posterior capsule, capsule is ruptured or is there any, any tear because if you are going to tell the ophthalmologist or you are going to tell uh, whoever going to operating surgeon and they can make a precautionary setting, so thereby the nucleus drop, which is a, a, a very, very uh, highly complica high complication when it comes to PSC cataract. I want to share a small story. Uh, during lockdown, I happened to see one particular patient who came with a corneal ulcer been treated for three weeks and they came for a follow-up. The, um, yeah, the patient was around 21 or 22. When I uh, examined, the patient had reasonably a good recovery. Since it's a unilateral corneal ulcer, the other eye was emetropic and the patient had almost normal appearance, but the patient was not reading 6-5 vision or a 6-6. Even 6-6, was, she was little struggling. When I looked at the patient who has been worked up or who has been examined in the first visit, I saw somebody, uh, my own colleague optometrist who examined and she has written 66 and uh, all other external examination, slit lamp, all were rated normal. Okay, I also thought the same thing since it is almost healed and uh, in the first visit, they have not measured the IOP. So I thought it's a mandatory to measure the IOP in the second visit. So thereby I put the patient on the slit lamp. For my surprise, I found there was a punctate cataract. This is not a P PPC cataract, it's a punctate cataract which has been bilateral and which is present almost the entire uh, lens. It was, I assumed, okay, since the patient come for a, a corneal ulcer and the uh, uh, patient was a young patient, no other symptom. The patient is almost reading 6-6. So it is kind of overlooked and it was got missed. 
so i want to caution ke- keeping this as an example uh if you are going to examine any young individual don't assume they are going to be totally all right in the sense they are free from any other problem so when you are going to do a retinoscopy or a slit lamp pay attention see is there any opacification is present and it is a uh, just wanted to caution you they are bilateral in nature so thereby you need to pick it uh, as early cautioning them would be much much uh, important when it comes posterior polar cataract it is usually associated with the, the remnant holoid system and it was reported way back during a ducal period itself nearly 60% of the cases are stationary and what you can see very very clearly in a diffuse illumination of a slit lamp where you can see the onion kind of effect which appears as if the bull's eye effect and you can much more clearly see it with the retro illumination what you really need to know is in a in a posterior polar cataract not just polar region alone get involved as the age progress they their cataract also develop uh, relatively faster and like your age related cataract they may get posterior subcapsular with the caps uh, posterior capsular uh, posterior polar cataract or some people may have nuclear sclerosis been associated with your polar cataract so you need to look at it what happens off late we started uh, imaging uh, using a anti resegment uh, oct Uh, so thereby we get to know how the post whenever we are going to have a relatively denser cataract and we are not very sure whether it's a posterior subcapsular or a posterior polar or ns with the polar which is very difficult to differentiate we do oct so thereby we know whether there is a chance of nucleus drop basically we are looking at the posterior capsule is ruptured or not and they become uh, symptomatic especially in the night driving and they will have increasing glare and very very importantly they will also complain of reading a fine print they do have a reduced contrast sensitivity or a visual acuity strabismus also been uh, s- reported when it become visually significant so when you are going to see uh, uh, especially uh, there is a squint but obviously you are not seeing any refractive error or something probably you need to think of is there any cataract is present so please please keep this particular point so thereby you are helping the patient in a larger way clinically you can see it it's a self evident in a slit lamp and i don't think uh, it required any extra skill to identify in a moderate cases or uh, to severe cases your retinoscopy is very very helpful off late i thought retinoscopy is uh, need not when it comes doing a refraction probably your uh, pgp or autoref can help but this is one advantage where you can pick it up how the medial opacity so retinoscopy at least for the purpose of seeing the medial status and the quality of the reflex at least for that purpose you can do a retinoscopy if you are not a great fan of retinoscopy if you are a fan obviously you are going to do it so that way you are not going to miss out anything again when it comes grading grade, there, there are two two different types of grading uh, there are three types uh, uh, the the type 1 is very very typical where you are going to see there is a ppc which is associated with the pac where you are going to grade them as a type 1 and when when it comes type 2 where you see a sharply defined round or oval opacify opacity with a ringed appearance like an onion the picture which i have shown to you which is typically a grade 2 the grade 3 is very similar to grade 2 but which is going to have associated with a thin or absent of posterior capsule so this is what is very very important the grade 3 or the type 3 is very very important to pick it up as an optometrist and they report to an ophthalmologist or the opt- operating surgeon the type 4 where you are going to have combination of above all three with uh, your nucleus sclerosis so this is one type of classification or grading when it comes a pediatric um, grading which is uh, graded based on the area of involved and uh, this is this has been very very clinically useful 
and you can do it with the help of uh, your retinoscopy when you are going to do retinoscopy when you are going to see very small tiny opacity without any major optical quality degradation otherwise it's uh, optically they are normal you grade them as grade 1 when it's going to be um, almost 2 to 1/3 uh, to 2/3 going to obstruct and without any major vision loss you are going to grade them as a grade 2 where uh, the grade 3 is almost like a disc disc like opacity and the posterior capsule is surrounded and where you are going to see uh, the red reflex only with a dilated pupil then uh, you you grade them grade 3 the grade 4 is almost totally opacified and it is occluded there is no sufficient red reflex being observed and this is very very important uh, what is very important uh, when you are going to pick up a posterior polar cataract in a pediatric population uh, where you may need to consider prior to the surgery patching because he advocate the patching before the surgery is very very good as a diagnostic tool basically what he recommended was when you are going to patch them for 2 uh, to 3 months and you are going to come back and you see the vision is getting increased probably the cataract may not require immediate surgery if the vision is not improving probably you need to really look for a surgery of course following the surgery you need to consider patching the modern way or the recent way people people like me in a most of the tertiary care center how they do uh, is using your anterior segment oct uh, which gives the eye resolution images where uh, you can grade them uh, the posterior Uh, different you it, it also helps you to differentiate whether it's a posterior polar cataract or a posterior subcapsular cataract um i have just got four pictures which has been reported by chen and what you see in a uh, picture a is basically your posterior subcapsular and posterior polar both are there but uh, it is not having any posterior capsular rupture okay and what do you see in a type b which is a grade 1 which is much much earlier what do you see is the polar region is cataractous but your psc also you are able to see it and uh, it is a, it is a very very early stage so thereby you grade this as a grade 1 the grade 2 is where you can see the polar region is much more denser compared to grade 1 and uh, still your posterior capsule is intact and there is no rupture if you see clearly the picture d where you can see the posterior capsular line where you can see it here which is kind of disconnect and the polar cataract is melted and it is coming out almost coming out of the lens this is where is important in clinically you need to report when you happen to identify such case and report um the operating surgeon makes uh much more cautious and make sure the nucleus is not getting dropped by this and they have to take care uh, even if it is dropped the vr surgeon comes in to rescue and they uh, perform cataract surgery uneventfully so these are all my reference and uh, i also given other reference in a respective slides um and in the meantime i think uh, you touched upon a very uh, important topic i think we do whether you are a student or you are practicing optometrist in the retail outlet as well you definitely see cataract patients you definitely see patients who have lens opacities and all that so uh I think when you refer your patients to the fellow of thalmology it would be very good if you grade them and send to them right it makes life for them much more easier and it 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 really helps them to take their future action plan am i right yeah what you said is absolutely right 
because this is where uh, the relationship between the ophthalmologist and optometrist goes long way and it also differentiates um, you from an unqualified person to a qualified person and when you going to talk with the facts and the, you are going to really gain professional respects that's why right. yeah yeah and uh, you know it's it's not something which is a rare condition it's a very common condition so you would be encountering it probably every day you would be seeing two to three patients anyways so if we know how to grade it i think it makes it much more uh, professionally yeah. it makes it much more nicer on our part right okay i saw one okay yeah what precaution need to be taken particularly in ppc posterior polar cataract actually you you no need to take any precaution basically um it's basically you need to divide the patient when you happen to see whether they got a posterior polar cataract let's say if the posterior polar cataract you picked in a early child uh, in the childhood uh, less than 10 the first thing what you need to think is a uh, amphiogenic so you may recommend patching immediate patching and uh, probably call them back within a month and look for is the vision is improving if vision improves okay probably you can do you are differentiating it is the um uh, cataract is insignificant but it is the amphiogenic is getting improved if the vision is not improving then you need to refer the patient immediately to a pediatric cataract surgeon or any cataract surgeon who is familiar with this kind of a case and obviously if you send with a good note stating that and i am happen to see this patient their visual acuity status slit lamp finding including grading and patching being done and the patient the both patient and the surgeon going to be remain very thankful to you okay mm-hmm. and uh, is ubm is okay the second part if you are happen to see posterior polar cataract in a adult or a, a aged person like a 40 and above you need it is like any other cataract all you need to do grade them specifically look for but obviously it is very very difficult in or probably highly impossible to look for a posterior rupture probably you put a note saying that prior to the surgery the posterior capsule need to be evaluated so the surgeon takes care that way off late people do image them right now that is what is important when it comes ubm versus posterior polar cataract ubm going to give much much poor resolution so thereby your ubm not able to pick it up such a subtle changes mm-hmm. um, even among anterior segment oct there are three different octs are there um uh, one uh, by there are two type of oct one both of them by uh, zeiss and one happened to be by the oculus if i'm right um the zeiss visante which is specially designed for anterior segment oct which is almost obsolete right now i no longer been manufactured the cirrus model the cirrus 5000 or a 4000 5000 and 6000 do come with the anterior segment lens attachment which just put it and you can able to image the posterior surface of the lens so thereby you are able to uh, image them i think at present the only way to image them is with the oct the other type of oct is your uh, cassia 1 and cassia 2 i don't have any experience with cassia 2 i have not seen but i have seen with cassia 1 cassia 1 again suffers with the resolution keeping all that um, by and large looking at a posterior capsule the cirrus 5000 or 6000 with anterior segment lens is the best way and again i'm just telling you i am not representing or i don't have any commercial interest for a um zeiss or any of the product which i am discussed over here but i am just recommending based on the clinical use yes. okay so that is that is what is important okay is it related with the marfan syndrome okay i am okay 
in marfan syndrome you are not going to get just cataract of course cataract would be there what more important is the subluxation marfan syndrome the classical ones are the subluxations what we are talking about um not the subluxation it's a pure common very common type of cataract the four common type you are posterior subcapsula nucleus sclerosus cortical spokes and the posterior polar which account more than 99% we are talking we are not talking anything on marfan syndrome okay okay and when it comes traumatic cataract um they may not fall into any of this maybe traumatic cataract leading to a posterior subcapsular or a long standing traumatic cataract maybe but I, you can use uh, the same grading system what i have recommended but this grading system what i come across they are ideal for this four type but nothing wrong in using it okay in a traumatic cataract also it's a cataract obviously you can evaluate with the elimination technique three elimination technique which i have shared and you can use the same technique of uh, grading them that is also quite uh, possible not a problem yeah yeah and uh, yeah i think uh, most all questions we have taken any more questions coming we'll just see but i i, I do have one uh, i don't know whether it's a question or or a comment but uh, do you think dilatation is really important to great cataracts or is ah, it a good very of- very important question when it comes grading the cataract especially the cortical spokes dilatation is very important but you may ask me very very openly in a in a larger sense even within india we are not allowed to dilate that's right okay so it is very important to dilate uh, especially to see the entire range of cataract so the best thing uh, if you are not going to dilate you know, especially in a private practice nobody likes like if you are if i go for ophthalmic examination even a high head dilatation mm-hmm. but what you can do is um retro elimination alone would be difficult okay because you are going to put lot of light so that by the people constrict very badly and they really suffers retro elimination definitely required dilatation but other two whether it is your cortical spokes or your uh, diffuse illumination keeping the illumination very very low the pupil dilates in a dim room so thereby you get a fairly good amount but the gold standard method of grading is dilatation but nothing stops you grading no. without uh, undilated state but you can you can mention that cataract was graded in undilated state undilated. yeah 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 so as long as you can see maximum coverage through the pupil is is the best what we can do at correct, this point. correct 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 because you are going to grade the entire cataract so thereby it is very important it is uh, grade in a dilated state all right thanks thanks it is, it is a wonderful question actually yeah and somebody was asking about blue dot cataract and i think those type of cataracts are very rare so we did not uh, look about it but any uh, com- blue dot cataract uh, they are they are usually uh, non progress in nature they they are associated with various other syndrome visually they are not going to have any problem uh, grading them is very difficult okay uh, probably if you write blue dot cataract that itself is a a uh, good decision and it will be uh, you will be appreciated for the correct diagnosis yes as for the diagnosis itself you won uh, won the challenge will be appreciated yeah all right okay so thank you so much i think jyoti sir we have taken uh, all relevant question which popped up onto the chat thank, thank you thank you so much and I wish you again very very happy new year have a safe um covid free life very soon so thank you so much sir so to the attendees we we do have session tomorrow uh, so just sharing with you the details and i uh, wish to see everyone tomorrow as well we are starting slightly earlier compared to today it's 6:30 th- 
evening Indian time and 9 p.m. late evening Malaysian time and we'll understand the role of optometrists in managing or diagnosing in terms of autism and uh, I hope to see you all again tomorrow. Thank you so much everyone once again for attending. See you all tomorrow. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Thank you.